Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and follow along if you want to learn more about your body, your health, your fertility, and essentially be a better advocate for yourself and for the people around you. Today we are going to be talking about getting older and specifically age-related infertility. And I know that's a topic nobody ever really wants to talk about, but I hear people say all the time that their biologic clock is ticking or that they are running out of eggs so they can't get pregnant. And the truth is that's not really the thing that impacts us getting pregnant as we get older. So I want you to have a little bit better grasp on what's really going on inside of our ovary and what is really happening as we age. So the analogy I always use when I like to talk about the ovary is to talk about a vault inside the ovary where all your eggs are kept. And I'm not going to go deep in that analogy, but I have a whole recent video on it. But essentially the take home concept is you're born with all the eggs you're ever going to have. Eventually, you're going to run out of them, and when you're out of eggs, you're in menopause. So all the time in between is when you essentially are having months of egg depletion. When you have more eggs inside the vault, more come out every month, and when you have less eggs inside the vault, fewer come out every month. So we can evaluate the eggs outside the vault, and that is what we call a marker of ovarian reserve. So when there's more inside, more come out. If we're counting your eggs, how many eggs do you have? We can count them by ultrasound. We can count them by using a blood test to estimate called AMH, or we can do FSH and estrogen levels, which are less done because of the specificity when you have to check them really early in your cycle. And they've largely been replaced by AMH blood testing. In short, a lot of people think, oh, I'm hit 35 and I'm about to be out of eggs. And so that is why my biologic clock is ticking. But the way I really like to think about it is that every month that vault is sending out a group of eggs. And in principle, it doesn't matter how many eggs are outside the vault as long as you're still ovulating. Side note is when you get to those extremes closer to menopause, you will start to have ovulatory dysfunction. And that defines perimenopause when your body is not as reliably producing that egg, estrogen, ovulation, progesterone, period pathway, and you start to see irregularity and more moments of low estrogen causing traditional symptoms we think about in perimenopause. In that time when you're still having a regular cycle and you're still ovulating, as long as you are ovulating, you're releasing an egg. And so when you have five eggs or 15 eggs or 20 eggs, if you are the same age, these three people, everybody's releasing one egg and should have the same chance of getting pregnant as age match peers. And in fertile cohorts or people without proven infertility, that has held true, that having a low AMH is not associated with a longer time to pregnancy or lack of being able to get pregnant or higher diagnosis of infertility in those people. Now, one thing that I think is really important is that somebody with a lower AMH that has been associated with going into menopause faster. So yes, running out of eggs is the end of your clock, but what really holds you back from being able to get pregnant as you get older is actually egg quality or the genetics of these eggs. And so if we imagine that all the eggs are sitting there inside the vault since before you're born, they are exposed to the wear and tear of your life, to all the inflammation you're exposed to, to all the chemicals that exist in our world, and just tincture of time. Time breaks our cells down. If we think about our cells, we think about the mitochondria in our cells, the little powerhouses, over time, that powerhouse is going to get old, just like we're going to get wrinkles and back pain and sore knees. Your cells age and the cells inside your ovary are no different. So those follicles, those eggs that have been sitting there longer, have been exposed to more. They've had more wear and tear, their powerhouses are breaking down, and they are at higher risk to have poor or bad egg quality. What we really mean when we talk about egg quality is the genetics inside the egg. So we think about an egg and we think about its job. The egg's job is essentially to hold your chromosomes in perfect position and split them evenly so that half those chromosomes can be fertilized by sperm. Very interesting is that every chromosome has a spot 
and the egg is held in metaphase of meiosis. If you rewind the clock to biology, you'll remember that metaphase is when your chromosomes meet in the middle. So they are met in the middle and they are held this way until you ovulate. So I'm 42. My eggs have been sitting here for 42 years. If you are 25, they've been sitting like this 25 years. Who's are going to have less wear and tear and function better? Likely the 25 year old, because the longer they've been sitting here, the more likely somebody is to get out of line. And my favorite analogy is to imagine a line of kindergartners. So the kindergartners get in the same line, A to Z every single day. But the longer I make them stand in that line before we go somewhere, the higher the likelihood somebody's going to get out of line. And they've been standing there for 40 years. Somebody's going to be out of spot, meaning less of my eggs have the chromosomes in the right spot. Less of them are going to be normal. I'm going to have a higher rate of poor egg quality. When that happens, that means that we have less likely to have a fertilization, less likely to have an embryo grow and develop normally, less likely to have an implantation. If we do have an implantation, higher risk of miscarriage. So we see the graph of your age getting older and the rate of pregnancy going down and the rate of miscarriage going up. And the reason why is not simply because you're out of eggs or your egg counts low. Yes, when you're out of eggs is the end, but the real damage and the real important thing that we don't think about is that it's the quality of the eggs and just the older you are, no matter if you have a high egg count or a low one, your eggs have been exposed to more life. I will have people go get an AMH test checked and it'll be high and they will delay childbearing with this idea that they have good fertility because they still have eggs and that they're not about to be out of eggs. So they're going to have no problem getting pregnant. And that's not true because the age related infertility is still going to be a factor. Age is the number one predictor of success with all fertility treatments. If that was a quiz, that is what every fertility doctor would tell you. That can sometimes feel very depressing if you're hearing this. And so what does that mean? Yeah, your chance of getting pregnant is lower the later you are starting your family. So if you are 30 and trying to get pregnant for the first time, you have a 20% chance per month. If you are 35, you have a 12% chance per month. If you are 38, you have a 8% chance per month. If you're 40, you have a 5% chance per month and less. So these numbers are lower as you get older. That's not because there's less eggs, there are less eggs, but as long as you're still ovulating, it's because the eggs that you are ovulating have your chromosomes out of line. And that is what's really starting to hold you back. And that's why those pregnancy rates feel so low. Remember that at your best, when you're young, you know, your top fertility rates are only 25%. So humans love a hundred, but that's not our reality. So I really want you to understand that you can't change your age. Yes, if you're running out of eggs earlier, Intervening sooner, trying to start a family sooner, or freezing your eggs, or freezing embryos if you have a partner can be a strategy to prolong your reproductive lifespan. But for the most part, your age is going to be your age whenever you choose to do that. So success rates will be better when you do that younger. The other piece of the puzzle that we need to talk about and think about is that the wear and tear on the eggs is tied to inflammation. So we can say it's inflammation and toxins. Well, you maybe can't help if you live in an area with air pollution, which we know is associated with poor egg quality, but you can control the foods you eat, the other chemicals you put in and on your body. You can control how much processed foods you have, how much sleep you get. Sleep is when your body heals. You can control a lot about your inflammatory environment. And so if you are starting this journey older and you want to say, I want to do everything possible or you're having to go through fertility treatments and you say, well, what can I do to try to optimize my chance of success? That answer is going to be to focus on decreasing your inflammation, decreasing your exposure to toxins, cigarettes, alcohol, marijuana, processed foods, sugars. You're going to want to get sleep. You're going to want to take care of yourself. And so these things aren't just feel good ideas to make you feel better, but inflammation has been associated with higher rates of infertility. So we know this is correlated. So important concept is that as you get older, miscarriage rates increase, rate of pregnancy decreases, but it's not because your egg count is low. It is because your eggs have been sitting there for a long time. 
So the earlier you start to take care of yourself, the better. Ask your questions about egg quality below. I know there's always a lot of them and we can see what there is and decide if we want to do a live or something else coming up to answer them. As always, thanks for following along and subscribing. Share this with friends and you can get more information on Instagram or on the As A Woman podcast. Thanks, friends.